What's going on guys? It's Nathan. I just want to take a quick moment of your time to allow you to know a little bit more about the episode sponsor. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, now it is the easiest, and when I say easiest, I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring this episode, but it is the easiest way to not only start, but launch your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free. There's no catch. There's no fine print. It's just 100% you, your content, your podcast, as easy as one, two, three, and I will say it again, it is free. Now, you can integrate music from Spotify, you can have guest hosts, you can have your listeners record messages, and you can actually play it on your podcast, and best of all, you can do this in the comfort of your own home, on your phone, or laptop. It doesn't matter. Anywhere, it's done. Now, what really sold me was the fact that they offer distribution of your podcast. Do you know how hard it is to have your uh, podcast approved for Apple or Spotify without a company like Anchor? They'll do that for you. This podcast can be heard on Apple, Spotify, Google, and so many more, all thanks to Anchor. Now, you also can make money off of your podcast. You'll get different sponsors for episodes, and you'll be able to monetize those so take advantage of that and again it's all in one place so make sure you go ahead and download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today You guys don't know who is on the screen below me if you didn't grow up in the 90s and i'm not sure what you're doing here no i'm just kidding but we have the one the only the actress the uh philanth- i can never say that word samantha that i can't say um she has done so much for me personally as a child growing up in the 90s on shows like uh alex mack i'm sure you all know robin russo from the secret world of alex mack she was on Boy Meets World, as well as Step by Step. You guys remember that show? Um, ER. I mean, you've been on so many things. It's incredible. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, being a part of Raw History. And are you ready to uh, let your Raw History out? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. So a little bit of background um, on you for those who are uh, joining. And of course, everyone, uh, if you if you want to ask some questions, you could always join in the chat. If you want to join in on the actual video chat towards the end, if there's time, of course, um, you know, it's up to, you know, how she feels. If you have time to do so, um, you know, she, I'm sure would love to ask or answer some of your questions as well. Um, so it's on YouTube as well here as on you now. Um, so thank you, you know, for sponsoring this as well. So a little bit about you. Um, you actually started out at two years old in my group, right? Two? Yeah. That's insane. I, I, so you, you started out at two, which led, um, to a Broadway, uh, production, um, in Manhattan, um, where you lived in New York for, for quite a while, right? Uh, well, well, uh, when did you move to? When I was nine. I moved out here when I was, or to California, I should say, when I was nine years old. Nine. Okay. So that's, all right. And then that's when you were on Billy on TGIF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. You were also in a McDonald's commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to be in a McDonald's commercial when I was younger. I don't know why. Um, but you've been in 14 TV shows, like I said, Alex Mack, Boy Meets World, Step by Step. Uh, ER, Baywatch, 90210, um, over six movies. I mean, you've won numerous awards. It's, it's, how does that feel to know that you've accomplished so much at such a young age and you're still to this day accomplishing so much? Um, I mean, it sounds a lot cooler when you say it. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm grateful for, um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to have that kind of a stamp, I guess, on pop culture. It means a lot. Yeah. I mean, I I, I can say for myself, growing up, um, I I idolized all. I I used to tell all my family that I could morph and and um, you know do all the powers that uh, Larissa Alex yeah on the show, and I always said if I could be. Anyone on the show besides Alex, it would be Robin Russo because I related to you 
in, in the aspect is it, like I knew who I was as a person, um, but I also was a little bit like, you know, that like standoffish a little bit, um, you know, uh, just not the norm, what everyone is, is used to, at, you know, and, and I love that about your character so much. You stood out, especially the what when you were that, the pigtails, that yeah. everything about it was amazing. Oh, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Yeah. Now, starting out at such a young age in, in you know, the entertainment industry, I can only imagine, you know, did that affect your life growing up as a teenager or young adult and even now? Yeah, I mean, as a young, I mean, as a teenager, um, yeah, it was a, just a different life. You know, I didn't go to a regular school. I didn't, um, I didn't do any kind of like normal thing that kids were doing. It was all acting. That was my whole entire life, um, which I loved. But I also missed out on a lot of things too. And it, you know, it also changes you as far as like your psyche and stuff like that. Cause you're just trained at a really early age to perform and work and make money and, and a lot of lines get blurred and things start to get really confused. So yeah, I mean, and, and to this day, I mean, it's probably what I'm known for best being an actress and um, that can kind of fuck with your head still too. Cause now, you know, I don't have any current acting that I'm doing, so it, it always kind of makes you like, well, am I good enough if I'm not acting? What I do with the other part of my life, is that good enough? Like, you know, so yeah, I mean, it affects everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, and especially, well, thank goodness, you know, we didn't grow up in, in the the year 2020. Well, well, that's a whole nother topic. Right, right, right. <laughs> Having all of our mistakes and, and bad choices in life you know, weren't documented. <laughs> right, yeah. For the most part, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Unless we wanted it to be. Right. Okay. Now, we've definitely witnessed the, the repercussions of, you know, some might say the downward spiral of celebrities who started out at a young age, like Britney Spears, um, Amanda Bynes, uh, also even Lindsay Lohan. Um, and they've all got, like I said, they're started at a very young age on either Nickelodeon or Disney, you yeah. know, networks such as that. And now, you know, with that pressure to always be on or, you know, I guess, for you know, like camera ready, basically, you know, for the media, the paparazzi, the the fans, the, you know, everything, um, you know, do you, do you have any advice for any of your younger fans who might be watching or will be watching later on uh, who are looking to get into the entertainment industry as either an actress or a singer or whatever the case um, just really know who you are. Just know who you are. Google by Google. Only you getting a phone call. Um, yeah, just know who you are and, and stand really strong in that, you know, and don't compare yourself to anyone else because God makes you perfect exactly how you are. You know, I think when we start to compare ourselves to others is when we really get into kind of like the shit of, of what gets really uncomfortable. It's like, I'm not good enough. I'm not as pretty as that person. Or what have you, all of that stuff. And and if you love acting, you have to remember to love acting because if you don't, go do something else with your life, really, you know? I can, I can only imagine that the pressure of especially being someone, you know, so young to be so impressionable on, you know, how people look at you and what they feel about, you know, the outfits that you're wearing. And it's so unfortunate that that's how it is. Um, hopefully, you know, that changes with time. Um, but um, that's amazing advice, you know, it, it truly, and, and also have, I'm sure, have a good team behind you. That's Yeah, I mean, definitely have people that you trust behind you that have your best interest at heart. Of course, but just know who you are. Really know who you are. Perfect advice. Yeah. And I, as, as an adult, need to learn and, and take that into, into consideration. We all do. Yeah. I mean, we all do. No matter yeah. what you do in life. Now, you posted something on Facebook today that uh, this was not a part of, of uh, what, you know, the, this, the questions that I had. But you literally summed up 
pretty much this entire interview in, 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 uh, in, a, in a beautiful paragraph. Um, I'll, I'll read it later on, but um, you kind of touched on, you know, if this year in, in whole, uh, looking at it as, um, you know, an outsider, looking at someone's social media, people usually, I like to say, don't compare somebody's highlight reel to your B-roll mm-hmm. um, or, or your outtakes. Yeah. And now I, a lot of celebrities have this um, invisible pedestal that they're on. And do you think that a lot of, you know, celebrities or, you know, now YouTube um, influencers uh, have kind of been hiding behind smoke and mirrors? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody does, you know, I mean, I think the reason, yeah, why we get so, we feel so insecure when we go on social media and why there's all this mental health surrounding social media is because, you know, you're comparing however you're feeling on any given day to what someone's presenting as like their absolute best life. And, um, you know, none of that is real. None of that's, none of that's real. You know, like this is what I look like most of the time the pictures that I put on my social media for content that's those are modeling pictures or publicity shots or acting photos or headshots or you know um so and it's but it's hard I mean I go through the same thing I'll scroll through Instagram and I'm like oh my life sucks you know but like my life's beautiful exactly how it is so it's all smoke and mirrors for the most part yeah It really is. That's why there's a million filters. That's why there's a million ways to post something or, you know, um, you know, that's why there's like all this, uh, you know, uh, hype around how many likes you get and how many followers you have. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's a lot of it is bullshit. And we, we, but we all know that, but we don't, we know it and we don't even really like allow ourselves to know it, you know? Right. Yeah. I- I always say, like, I'm the first to admit I'm the the face tune king, but I will never deny the fact, um, you know, that that I do it. I I think that it's so um, kind of just it it kind of concerns me when these people, celebrities who, you know, are clearly augmented for a lack of uh, better words and and they're denying it. And then they have these children and, and young adults looking up to them as if that's the normal. And then they're denying the fact that they had any work done. At least, yeah. I, at least I admit that I, I you know, filter my... <laughs> Everybody does. Everyone throws a filter, a quick little judge over a picture. I mean, you know, I'm I'm definitely not afraid to go out without makeup or, you know, I wear sweatpants most often. But if I take, like, I don't even do selfies anymore because I'm just, like, so over it. But if I do a selfie or I take a picture with someone, like, yeah, I throw a quick, very subtle zhuzh over the picture of course we all do right i mean it's that's that's the the unfortunate well fortunate or unfortunate the new world we live in it is what it is yeah Yeah, exactly yeah yeah so it now there's speaking of uh, real quick let me tell you you don't do you have a filter on yourself right now i do not just a blue kind of backdrop deal. Blue backdrop and a ring light. You don't need a freaking uh, filter ever. <laughs> You're better looking like this. Isn't that crazy? Like, I see that, but you probably don't see that. And you probably think the same about me. And I'm like, oh, you're nuts. Like, of course I need a filter. But what, you know, what we see and what others see isn't crazy, you right. know? We always, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, I feel like we we know what our personal imperfections are or what we feel are our imperfections. Right, yeah. Focus on. When in reality, we're all really just thinking about what other people are thinking about us. You know what I mean? Right. Everyone's self-obsessed. Everyone's right. self-obsessed, yeah. <laughs> For, I mean, not like in, you know, in a no, horrible, yeah. horrible way, but a lot of people, you know, we think about, you know, we're stuck in our own heads, so yeah. It's true. Yeah. Very true. And, and, and kind of leading into that, um, there's, there's so much, you know, a, a ridiculous amount of stigma placed on um, mental um, health and il- mental illness. And I myself have always been very, very open about my struggles with anxiety, mm-hmm. with addiction, with uh, depression. And um, 
I know you, your, you yourself have been open in the past. We'll talk about that. Um, but there's been so many instances where I tried to mask uh, who I was or who who I really thought that I was. And I think I, I had mentioned to you um, my whole life, I felt as if I was playing a role for somebody else that I didn't really know who I was until, you know, actually just very recently. Um, now, do, do you feel like this stigma has has gotten worse as time got has gone by? Or had, do you think that there's a, you see a progression and that be um, more accepted and understood? I think it's getting better. I mean, I think more and more people are talking about it. It's less taboo. It's less kind of like, um, you know, uh, a sign of weakness. And I, I think, yeah, I definitely think it's getting better. I do. I th- there, there's so many people who, you know, could use, you know, their platforms um, that have, you know, such a, a large audience that, you know, some of them do. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to focus on, you know, the negative by any means. But um, I think that there are enough people who are, you know, out, you know, speaking out on, um, you know, like like Kanye West with, with everything that was going on with him. And, um, you know, there's just so many people, you know, celebrity and non-celebrity alike who go. It's, 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 thing, it, it's something that just is. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't go to up to somebody who has cancer and be like, Oh, <laughs> you have cancer like oh, you're so crazy like nobody chooses to have a mental illness so the fact that there's that stigma around that it just it, it boggles my mind but I also agree I think that it is getting much better than yeah I think it is yeah now that it's becoming you know the 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 year that we're in I think that everybody's going to be a lot more aware of what yeah. you know people have gone through for years and have been called crazy for so yeah, that's true now, with now, do you yourself suffer from from any mental illnesses or menti, uh, mental health issues? And if so, how do you cope? Um, you know, with, with with that being in the limelight and out of the limelight, and and how do you maintain you know that stability that, that you know need to, to keep going? Um, I mean, I have situational depression and a whole side of anxiety that I had no idea about that kind of came out throughout quarantine and COVID. And um, I've had panic attacks before or anxiety attacks when something was so huge that was happening that I had no control of. But anxiety hasn't necessarily been my thing that I've struggled with until this year. Um, But depression, yeah. I mean, there's days I can't even get out of bed, you know, and... um, and obviously, I, you know, I've struggled with addiction and alcoholism for a good portion of my life. And um, that is also, you know, in my opinion, a mental health diagnosis as well and a disease of the brain. And, you know, so yeah, I've had a lot of different things that I've kind of um, dealt with throughout my lifetime. And, and I just do the best that I can. And there are some days that I can't do anything at all. And I'm OK with that, you know, and um you know, I'm, I'm really blessed and fortunate to have so many incredible people in my life that really support me and keep me going. Um, you know, my boyfriend and my family and uh, my you know, kind of support system um, as far as that goes. So I'm, I know how lucky I am because I know there's people who really feel like they suffer in silence and all alone. And, and if I let myself, I would too, you know. Um, I think I've just been trained so well after all these years of being sober that I don't sit in it for too long. You know, I have a sponsor through AA and um, I try and get out of it as quickly as I can. And then there's some days where I'm like, fuck this, I'm just going to sit in it. And and, uh, and that's the best I can do on that day too. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, that's awesome that you have, you know, those people, uh, you know, there to, you um, kind of assist you on those days that it's not so um you know easy because like you said there are days where it's i'm sure it's much easier than others to to yeah. um to go through that now out, outside of acting um you know you also do work for a rehab facility uh which um, it's called restore health and wellness yeah yeah all right um and you've also this is amazing um i did not know this you founded uh, San Fernandino Valley um, Feed the Homeless Organization. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now, how does it feel to know that you are using that platform that I was discussing that so many people have for good? Um, like that, that has to be an amazing feeling to know that you're, you know, doing, um, you know, a, a service to people who are, you know, in need, especially now. Well, you know, I, I try not to think about it because the more I think about what I'm doing, the less I'm like out of what I'm actually doing. Right. So I just do it because it needed to be done. And, um, you know, I was at the worst part of my addiction. I was homeless at one point myself. And I just saw a really big, um, it's San Fernando Valley, but that's okay. Cause it's in California and not a lot of people know how to say that. I was just driving around and, and, you know, there was such a need, um, for someone to do something and just try and like feed some people out there and also go downtown to Skid Row and all of those places. So yeah, it's been one of my, um, one of my fondest, um, you know, times that I've had being of service is, you know, with this organization for sure. And we've taken it further than I realized we could have. So it's been amazing. Yeah. It's done. It's done more for me than anyone else. That's for sure. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's, I love to hear, you know, people, um, you know, doing for others. Uh, Cause I do believe that everything comes back. So, well, you, you have to. I mean, the more I think about you, the less I think about me, you know, and True. if we're not of service in the world, I mean, just uh, our purpose is um, dim, you know, obviously love is, I believe, why we're here on this planet, but also to like help when you can, how you can is so important and will provide you an experience in your life that. I've always tried to like provide to myself with drugs or alcohol or shopping or sex or what, whatever it was, but being of service to another human being actually was able to provide me that spiritual experience that I could never quite find with anything else. Wow. I never, I never even thought of it that way. That's yeah. That's <laughs> mind, <laughs> mind blown. Yeah. So, so What, what was it that made you um, decide that, you know, the volunteer work um, was what you wanted to do after having such an amazing and successful um, acting career? I mean, it was amazing and successful. And then, you know, as soon as I started using drugs, it was not so amazing and successful. And I was, you know, pretty down and out for a long time. Um, I lived in a car for a while, you know, I just kind of progressed really quickly to a very bad place. So I knew when I was kind of like graced by God to get out of all of that and make it out on the other side that I kind of had a responsibility to train my brain to always be thinking of like what I could do for somebody else. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Now... Um, now you said you know yourself that you had an addiction with alcohol um, and mm-hmm. uh, substances. What was your like aha moment? That moment when you were like enough? Like this is like when like what made you realize that that was not the road that you were intended to be on? I've had a few of those to be honest, you know, because I've kind of it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I'm at. So I would have that moment and then it wouldn't stick and then I'd have the moment again and it wouldn't stick. So I think this last time I got sober, it was just like, uh, I don't think it's anything I did. I think it was kind of like, um, divine intervention, uh, grace by God, whatever you believe in, whatever you want to call it, I think is what did it for me. Cause I think like left up to my own devices, I might not, you know, be the person you're looking at today so I think it was something much greater than myself that that made the decision for me like enough is enough you know and I think I had a different purpose in life than to just kind of you know die by drowning in an alcohol bottle or you know behind drugs so right yeah and I can I, I can 100% relate to that um you know there was a lot of time while I was living in New York City uh I, I, like I said there was times I was completely 
uh, intoxicated by the time it was, you know, most people weren't even waking up yet um, or were just getting home from an overnight shift. You know, it was, it was bad for a while. Um, yeah. And, and it took me waking up in a hospital, like what, what, what? And then, you know, it, it, it took a while after that, but I think that, you know, it was, it was that moment that was like, what are you like? I really had to sit and think, what, what am I doing? What is the purpose? What, do I like who I am when, when this is, when I am on, you know, when I'm drinking, um, you know, it's, it's it, like you said, though, there, there are multiple times when you, you go back and forth and, and I'm, I'm so thankful that you were able to, to get to that point and, and you're here with us now to have this conversation. So. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'm grateful too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If there's nobody more grateful than me. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here still too, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. So now you, so this again, so you, you mentioned that you, you were homeless. Now, was that due to alcoholism or? Yeah. Okay. All because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I won't go into the nitty gritty right. of it. Yeah. No. All- <laughs> All behind drug addiction and alcoholism, hundred percent. Yeah. And now, now describe that feeling. Um, I know that there's so many people in 2020 who are facing that. Um, you know, I can only imagine that being a psychiatrist right now would be the, the profession that I should have chose. Um, but you know, choosing alcohol and drugs, and you know, having no income. Um, what was that like to? To, you know, to know that you had that that career, that moment that was so so strong, and then you know, life happened, and you know, you found yourself in that situation. I mean, it's heavy, and you keep you keep drinking to not have to think about how heavy it is, and to right. not have to like think about what you lost. You know, but yeah, it's, it's heavy, and and it's um, you know, I I can imagine how heavy it is for people that are, you know, excuse me, going through it right now. Um, it's, it's a tough deal. Um, like when your one coping skill is to drink over how you feel, you know, but I understand. And like, if there's anything I can say, it's just that like, you don't have to drink again, even if you want to, you don't have to. Right. And if you don't want to drink ever again, you definitely don't have to. You just have to like reach out to your um, resources, whatever they are in your area, be it central office for alcoholics and animals or a rehabilitation facility or, you know, if you don't have any insurance and if there's a government program in your area, there, there are options, you know, um, you just have to be vigilant, but you have to really know that you're done with whatever it is that you're doing that's harmful right. to your spirit, whether it's drinking drugs gambling eating i mean there's a million different ways that people um that people damage themselves you know and that's that's amazing that you said because there's so many people when you that when some addiction you know it instantly goes to you know drugs or alcohol but there are so many other um actors like you said gambling um, food i mean i'm as skinny as can be but trust and believe I can I can out eat anybody on any, but there are so many different you know things that can be considered an addiction. So yeah. to, you know to really know that there are you know people and, and sort resources absolutely. Yeah. Important, definitely important. Guys, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> now this this one is 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 even tough for me to to ask. Um, you recently found out that you were adopted. Yeah. Um, and I can only imagine that that could have, you know, opened up some emotions that you never even yeah. would imagine having. Yeah. Um, now, can you can you touch a little bit on that? And and you know when when it was that this happened? Was this during your sobriety? Was this? Yeah, um, it was about um, four years ago. So yeah, I was sober, um, sober a long time, even at that point. And um, it's just it all kind of like came about a weird way but um yeah I matched with someone on 23 and me and that kind of started the whole story and led me down like a whole path to the Pandora's box 
I, you know, looked into it. I found another family member and another family member, and they were all, like, pretty close family members, not distant, distant cousins, but, like, a grandpa, uncle, brother, sister. Yeah, a lot. So, um, yeah, that was about four years ago, and, of course, there's a million emotions that come along with it, but I was super grateful and very um, excited to, like, embrace the experience. Right. Yeah. That's 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 a, a beautiful thing to hear to you know look at the you know as an opportunity to learn more about something that you may maybe never would have had a chance to yeah. know about your you know your 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 history your you know your your family your your genetics and all of that so yeah. that's that, that shows a lot of of your character that you're able to you know pull the positive out of out of that yeah time. I was excited I was down I was like alright yeah I have brothers and a sister and uncles and cousins and a grandpa and um, I was excited I was excited to learn about everything and see where it could take all of us you know awesome. yeah yeah but is that you're still in con- are you still in contact with, with them yeah my brother's actually going to be here any, any second in Texas at my boyfriend's house we come here every year for Christmas my brother's on his way now. Everyone got COVID tested, so we're all safe. So I don't want like a bunch of shit about that because we have been very, very good about everything. Rapid tests, other what, the regular tests, the rapid tests, the mat, everything. It's been insane. So yeah, he's actually going to be here any second. So by the time I get off here with you, he'll be downstairs with them waiting for me. So yeah, we're all very close now. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I only have a couple more questions, so I won't. Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah. Um, So, now being that you're an actress, you know, a model, um, you're also an advocate for and an ally for the LGBT community, uh, which, um, as you all know, hi, I'm gay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You're number 12 on LGBT. I don't know what that means. Now you're 11. Yeah, we're trending at 11. No clue what any of this means, but, um... Yes, I'm a huge, huge advocate, big ally. Um, yeah, I, um... It, it's... I, I, it's hard to, like, kind of express how I feel about the community in a way that doesn't sound kind of arrogant for somebody who identifies as a straight um, female, but I have a love um, for anyone who is brave enough to express themselves in a world who tells you you couldn't be what you are, right? And I think that there is no other um, community that is as bold and brave as the LGBTQ community by far. Um, and yeah, I just, I've kind of just like all my best friends have always been gay. Um, you know, male, female, um, you know, yeah, I don't know. I've just, uh, maybe I was gay in a past life. Maybe I was trans in a past life. I have no idea, but I have such a calling to that community that, um, you know, and I'm just always so kind of taken aback by, um, you know, the bravery it takes to be who you are, to just be who God made you to be. What is it? I have to fight that, you know, to just be who you are every single day. Because I believe everybody's perfect in God's creation, you know? And then we just kind of get a skewed along the way. And I, when I say a skewed, I mean like, um, you know, like a murderer, I don't think is like, you know, I think, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but for someone who was just born exactly who they were supposed to be and then has to like fight that for their whole life and be scared to be that and get picked on or bullied or um, ousted by their families or what have you. Yeah. I mean, I wish I knew more I could do than to just be an ear and ally and advocate. Um, And maybe that's my next project to figure out how I can really jump in there and be of service more to that community. But yeah, so Yes, I hope that answered that question. Yeah. Well, I, I know somebody who, you know, might be able to, you know. Please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, tell him to let me know. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you, I'll definitely keep in, I'll uh, keep you guys in the loop. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in, 
and and I thank you first and foremost for for you know st- standing up for not just the LGBT community but for you know the Black Life uh, Mat- the Black Lives Matter movement the yeah. um, um, you know many things that that, that I think are uh, and I don't I I say that with quotes because I don't feel that way but it's like what is the the media making the the, the topic of of discussion um, and then it's kind of like on to the next in the non- yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. And, and you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you, you know, have consistently stuck by your 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 word and, and what you believe in, and have consistently shared, you know, your your thoughts unapologetically, um, almost if for a lack of better words, um, and really been you know truly authentic with you know your your supporters and, and friends and fans. So we love. I love you guys too. Thank you. Without a doubt. Now tell me about this camp. Okay, so you had, you teamed up with, um, your, okay, let me get it. You were, you were asked to collaborate yeah. with a company to uh, raise proceeds for um, the homeless community. Um, and they sold out, right? Like they're yeah. like, yeah, I got approached by a candle company. It's called a Better Half Collection. Um, they reached out to me. I was her name's Kala. She owns the company. She's really awesome. She's a woman of color as well. Um, it's a small business and some things that are really important to me. Well, and you know, a lot of kind of stuff like that. I had to you know redirect my booking agent, and then he vetted it, and he's like, "Oh, it sounds legit." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And then I got involved and helped with the creative process of it so we came up with two candles one is just a Natanya Ross candle the other one is an Alex Mack one they're sold as a set so it's a two candle set I think we separated them now for the month of December for some people that just wanted one or the other but yeah 20% went to Blessed Bag which is an organization in Los Angeles that packs um, a bag for a man a woman and a dog um, that has like pretty much everything someone would need to kind of survive for like at least a week or so out on the streets. Yeah. Um, so really, and the woman who created that organization, her name's Bella Baskin and she's amazing. Her and I have teamed up many times before with uh, my feed the homeless and her blessed bag. So her organization, I thought it was tacky to like have the proceeds go to my own organization. So it was, um, it was just like a perfect fit and, yeah, we sold out um, the first week of pre-sale in October. We did it again in November. We were able to feed recently or pass out, I should say, almost 75 bags. Um, yeah, with the 20% of the proceeds that went to that. So that was awesome. And I felt really lucky to have been asked to do that. And the candles are still up. It's um, I think there's a link in my bio on Instagram. Um it's yeah, just if you go to her page and then in her bio, it's just the Natanya set. So yeah, that was really cool. Well, well, now that I know that they're not sold out, I know where I'll be uh, making some purchases for Christmas. Gifts. Please do, yes, please do. That would be awesome. They're separated now, so you can pick either or. And um, yeah, it was a really cool thing to be a part of, and I got a lot of support from my acting friends from that. Um, that was really special on my Instagram, on my highlight reel. It just says like in candle collab. And I kind of um, saved all of the different videos my friends had made for me, you know, um, helping me promote everything. So it was a really cool experience. Yeah. And I remember joining, I was the, the live stream with you and Angelique. Um, oh yeah, for the can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like two, yeah. two of my people. Like what, like what? Yeah. Yeah, Angelique was um, Angelique was awesome in helping me promote that too. She's been a, a good friend since we were nine years old. So I know yeah. you guys we grew up together. Yeah, there's a lot of us that stayed friends a really, really long time, and it's crazy. Yeah. Now this is not a part of the uh, approved. <laughs> approved. All right, you got. Uh, speaking like growing like as you just said, you know, a lot of you guys are still in touch with. Um, each other uh, are there you know, of the show um you know I, i'm sure you guys are still very close if not um you know and, but as far as you know supporting each other's projects is that 
Yeah, I mean, yes. So I still talk to Larissa a lot, and um, yeah, she's been very supportive. I did a, I got us all together for a reunion during quarantine. We filmed a little bit of it on Zoom. Um, that's- I think that's in my that's in my like IG stories or something on Instagram. Yeah. So um, and then Doris is like, you know, Doris is always he played Ray Alvarado. He's always we've never left each other's side. And then um, when we did our reunion special in 2018, that was at Universal Studios. That's when a lot of the rest of them came back into my life as well. Primarily Jason Strickland, who played Scott Green. And he's one of my best friends now. And um, he has his own production company called In the Light Productions. And he makes these incredible projects. He's a brilliant director. He's always supporting everything I'm doing, too. So, yeah, I mean, again, very lucky. I know it's very rare for that kind of stuff. I mean, this show was on, you know, shit, we filmed it like... Was it 94 yeah, yeah, we st- well, I mean, we started filming I think in like ninety one or ninety two. Ninety one, yeah. Yeah, and we've we've you know for the most part remained I mean yeah, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And I still talk to the creator Tommy Lynch all the time too, so yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And that it, it's it shows that I mean you could tell with the chemistry that was on that show, um, just as, you know, you know the edited episodes um that you could there was that chemistry and that's something that you can't really um you can't fake that you no know? you can't and we grew up together no we knew each other but do you <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah we grew up together in like the coolest um decade of all you know yes. and that's what we experienced together like is a completely unique experience to us and that's special you know so yeah. Perfect. Well, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for the for uh, some type of reunion. I know I tried as yeah. much as I could uh, back you know, was it last year, I think. Um, but fingers, we got yeah, this. we're we're fingered crossed too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I won't keep you much longer. I just, um, you know, for everybody who's watching and listening later on in the podcast, um, you know, if you want to let everybody know where they can follow you or find you on social media, uh, any uh, projects or anything that you're working on personally or just even internally. Um, yeah. Um, my my Instagram is with Natanya Ross. So N-A-T-A-N-Y-A-R-O-S-S, Natanya Ross. Um, I'm pretty easy to find on Instagram. Uh, my fan page on Facebook is the same, Natanya Ross. Um, and yeah, I mean, no uh, projects coming up super quick. Um, I have a really amazing uh, booking agency that's working on kind of getting me into all of the convent, you know, everything's shut down right now, so there's not a lot. You can also find me on Cameo, I'm on Jemmy. Um, Jimmy does a lot of cool like zooms. Uh, we're thinking about putting together like a '90s, our own little '90s convention. So you know, there's there's different stuff going on. The candles are still up for sale, and you know, I'm hoping some really cool kind of deals come through in 2021. I know it, it's, it's it's going to be a new year, and I think that it's, it's a great time to really reinvent the art of. Um, what we've all lost, I think, throughout the years, and that's really um, being able to resource, like, fully, fully be aware in 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 our in our complete, um, my, like, I can't think of the right words. Lowered, help me. Um, but just, just like being framed to be like, right about, I mean, you have stories that that I'm sure. Yeah. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping I'm writing that book this year. That's that's the goal. We'll see. Got a little work to do before I can get started. But yeah, so we'll see. Perfect. Fingers crossed. Well, I'm I, I'm sure whatever it is that you set your mind to, you will definitely be able to accomplish. Um, I definitely appreciate all the um, you know all the time that that we've had you know, just discussing this, just even up to this moment. And, um, and, uh, 
I know that we touched on a, a lot of things. Is, is there anything that I didn't uh, necessarily ask or talk about that, that you would like to... Um, I, I talk a lot, so I'm sure... That- I said a lie. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I just want to remind everybody that, like, you know, one of the most damaging things you can do is to compare um, your insides to somebody's outsides. And it's really hard because we live in a world where everyone looks perfect and beautiful on social media and that's not reality and um you are perfect exactly how you are you are perfect exactly how you are that's the truth and i say it because i need to hear it too so yeah i think that's what i would leave everybody with and to have a really beautiful holiday no matter what your circumstances are um you know one there's a way out of it if you don't want them anymore and two if you think that the, the the hand of cards you've been dealt is bad. I can guarantee somebody's got a much worse deck. So um, it's just something to remember, and and that we need to be grateful and be there for each other and be kind. Be kind. You know, I like I don't care what kind of car someone drives. I don't care how much money you have, what Gucci purse you have. I don't care about any of that. Like to me, the coolest fucking thing somebody can be is kind. There's nothing cooler. That's so dope. When someone's just that kind, like that blows everything else out of the water. So that would be my my thoughts. I would leave everyone with. I couldn't have I couldn't have summed up any better. I couldn't. Well, again, thank you, thank you so much, honestly, for yeah. taking this time, especially right before Christmas and the holiday, um, to you know share your story and you know join us here on Raw History. And um, I know that you know you have a bunch of fans and and, and followers who will definitely you know, love to be able to hear the side of of you know the the Robin Roos so that they they grew up with but the actual person behind that the, the yeah. you've grown to be the beautiful woman that you've grown to be that we all have learned to love over the years. So thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. It. Thank you, babe. It means so much. So nice to see you. We'll talk soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right, babe. What do I do? Just click out right here? That's it? (laughs) That's it. That's it. (laughs) All right. Bye. All right. Have a good night. All right, guys. That was the Raw History stream for the evening. If you would like to watch this, of course, again, if you missed it, you can go over to my YouTube channel. It'll take probably about an hour or so for it to render over there. Um, and then a cleaned up and slightly edited version uh, will be available for uh, download on my podcast, which of course you can uh, check out on rawhistory.net. Um, there's also my store, my merch store, also at rawhistory.net. So basically everything that you'll need to uh, be able to watch, listen, or uh, hear this again will either be on YouTube or at rawhistory.net. Uh, huge thank you to Natanya for joining us and allowing us in on, you know, such a very um, personal um, part that not a lot of people are willing to share. And my mission with Raw History is to do that, to allow people uh, the knowledge and the awareness that it is okay to speak your truth, to speak your raw history. And as Natanya said, please stay kind to one another, take care of yourself and uh, enjoy your holidays. It's a festive time of year, right? It's 2020. No, I'm just kidding. But thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. And-